Hello and welcome back to Behavioural Treatments for Phobias. In this video we are going to go over some evaluation points for systematic desensitisation and flooding and also a couple of evaluation points just for behavioural treatments in general. And at the end of the video we'll go over some exam questions as well. Before I start I will just say if you haven't yet watched the video on behavioural treatments then I would go back and watch that. The link for it is in the description section at the bottom because without knowing about systematic desensitization and flooding beforehand, this video may not make very much sense to you. Okay, let's make a start. So the first evaluation point is a strength of systematic desensitization and it is some research support. Okay, as with all research support points you should definitely be saying who did the study what they did what they find found and then finish off with a conclusion so in this case you have Gilroy et al in 2002 who examined 42 patients with arachnophobia those patients were treated using three 45 minute sessions of systematic desensitization and then when assessed three and 33 months later, the systematic desensitization group were less fearful than a control group. And the control group in this case were only taught relaxation techniques. Okay, so it provides support for the effectiveness of systematic desensitization in the treatment for phobias. I would definitely suggest that you learn this point. Okay, research studies make very powerful evaluation points and it's always nice to have at least one in your evaluation section. Okay, moving on. We have a limitation of flooding and that is that the process is highly traumatic. Okay, so if you think about what flooding is, you are being thrown in the deep end um, with whatever your phobia is and you're just expected to deal with it. So it can cause a high level of anxiety. Okay, so much so that one researcher recalled a case when a patient had to be hospitalized after her session of flooding. Okay, um, so the problem with any therapy that is that traumatic is that people could quit, okay, before the therapy is over. And if people quit, then it becomes a waste of time and a waste of money. But more importantly, they're not completing the therapy. And so it becomes very ineffective as well. OK, so in that case, it's a limitation because the effectiveness of flooding is limited by the fact that it is so traumatic that people may drop out. OK, I hope that makes sense. Moving on, we have a couple of evaluation points for generic behavioral therapies and this first one is called symptom substitution. Now a problem with behavioral therapies is that they tend to only treat the symptoms but they ignore the underlying cause. Now the problem is that for some phobias the symptoms are only the tip of the iceberg and actually if you remove those symptoms which is what behavioral therapies will do the cause will still be there. And if the cause is still there, then the symptoms would simply resurface, possibly in another form. Okay, so an example is if you have a child, let's say, who is suffering from a bereavement, that child may push their fear about death onto something that's a little bit more tangible and easier to deal with. So that child might develop a fear of leaving the house, let's say. So if that child gets taken to a behavioral therapist to help that to help him deal with the fact that he's afraid of deal of leaving the house, then systematic desensitization or flooding wouldn't actually work for that child because once their symptoms have been dealt with, the cause would still be there. So the symptoms would just re-emerge somewhere else. So actually what needs to happen for that child is that the underlying cause needs to be dealt with. So whether that's an anxiety about death or whether it's the fact that they're going through a bereavement, it doesn't really matter. But those are the issues that need to be dealt with, not the symptoms. So that is a massive limitation of behavioral therapies for phobias. OK, because even though behaviorists claim that, you know, phobias all come about through conditioning, fact of the matter is some phobias do have underlying causes. 
and behavioral treatments will not treat those underlying causes, which means that they are limiting the help that they can provide people with. Okay, so that is a limitation of behavioral therapies. Okay, and then a final one is a general strength of behavioral therapies. So generally, behavioral therapies are faster, they're cheaper, and more importantly, they require much less effort on the patient's part than other therapies. Okay, so if I give you an example, CBT um, requires patients to think about their problems and interpret problems. Um, it very much requires people to look inside themselves and really think about what's going on. But behavioral therapies don't need you to do that. And that's a good thing because it means that behavioral therapies are much more accessible to a wide range of people. So, for example, people who may struggle to gain insight into their own motivations or their own emotions, like children or, for example, people perhaps with learning difficulties, will be able to access behavioral therapies much better. OK, so that means that behavioral therapies are applicable and helpful to a wide and diverse range of individuals, which gives it a greater scope to help people deal with their problems. OK, so that's a good thing about behavioral therapies. OK, so I hope those evaluation points have made sense. The last two of those evaluation points, they're a little bit longer, um, but you should be all right learning them. They are nice evaluation points to put in an essay and if you can remember all four then it will definitely make for a top level evaluation section if you can write them properly okay so try your best to learn them um, as much as you can okay and then we'll just finish off with a couple of exam questions so i haven't put essays in here because obviously essays can come up anywhere um, and if you need practice writing an essay then just think outline and evaluate behavioral treatments for phobias and then you've got yourself an essay whether it's for 12 marks or for 16 marks um, the questions to be slightly more aware of are the short answer and the application questions so the short answer questions um, just here they are generally between two and six marks you can get the odd one marker but generally they're between two and six marks and that wide range of marks means that it is absolutely essential that you can condense things down into um, you know the bare minimum whilst not losing any of the important detail okay and the way to do that is make sure that you are on it with your keywords and your key phrases knowing your keywords and your key phrases means that you don't have to waffle around the point you can get straight to it and that is the easiest way to condense something quite complicated into not very many words okay um so just be aware of that the same goes for application questions as well generally they're between two and six marks so a little bit of condensing is absolutely essential however the more important thing with application questions is that you must under all circumstances refer to the stem okay so in this case if you write an answer about tommy's phobia of birds without actually referring to tommy then you are going to sacrifice at least half of your marks okay so i've seen questions where you get one out of four or one out of six if you don't apply it um, even if you write a perfect example of how systematic desensitization is used if you don't refer to tommy every step of the way then you won't access the application marks okay so that would be a incredible waste of time and a shame because all you have to do is apply it and talk about tommy and the birds okay right and that is the end of the video it's only been a short one so i hope it's made sense and thank you very much for listening